So um, I guess to kind of come off of that, the seriousness of that, there was a piece in Variety uh, about WWE, part of their VIP Plus subscription service. Uh, Gavin Bridge, he wrote a story on, you know, a lot of the things that you and Brian talk about all the time when it comes to uh, WWE. But there was a part of this where they were trying to see where the declines were or why the declines were. And I'm not sure I agree necessarily with the analysis, but it's kind of interesting to read through. It was tra- interesting though, yeah. I and yeah. I don't I don't I I I mean it's funny because I wished for years that there was an a a, an, a, a way to do a survey cuz WWE always surveys its fans, but those are the ones who are still there. So you're really not going to learn why people aren't right. there by surveying the ones who stayed. I and and you know the idea, and, and with me, if I tried to do it, it would be surveys of, they'd be such hardcore fans that you really wouldn't get, like you'd get reasons for sure, but they're not necessarily representative of the casual fan. And you know, like we all have friends who are casual fans that don't watch, so I try to learn from them, but you know, it's not a big enough number to where you're really going to be able to say anything conclusively. And that's the survey, you know, I would like to see if you could do it is get a whole bunch of people um, and, you know, whether they were, that, that, that were fans that are not fans and you ask the question why. And I know Vince has always thought that a lot of it is just they got older and they had families and, you know, pro wrestling's always had a cycle of people who become fans and then move on. You know, where are the exceptions? It's most of the time it's, when I was a kid, the, the whole idea of pro wrestling was three-year cycles. And that's why you do angles every, you know, three years until, you know, the 80s when you just got out of control and tried to do so many angles. But it was, you know, the same angle every three years, not like you do one angle every three years. But the idea is is that after three years, you're, it's, it's, it, it appeals to kids, you get kids in, and then they stay, and then you have, you know, the, the other people. But it's like, yeah, there's always going to be the hardcores that are around forever, but the casual audience is going to come and go. And now I don't think that's the case at all. Um, and, 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 you know, it's like, you know, and and that's maybe oversimplified in, in a lot of ways. And, you know, but even, even like with, with New Japan, they did do a survey. It wasn't New Japan. It was, um, I think it was Weekly Pro Wrestling Magazine. I remember this. Um, it was, it was when New Japan was, was picking up. So I'm going to say this is probably five, six years old now. It's not, not right now, but they asked like the people, like how long, and these are magazine readers. This is not casual audience. How long have you been a fan? And it was mostly three years or less. So it was like that big thing of like, whoa, all of you people, you didn't watch Inoki. Everyone thought, oh, it's like these people who watch Inoki and then they left <laughs> when it got terrible and then they came back when it got great. It's like, no, they have no affinity for Inoki or, or Misawa. I mean, this is a Tanahashi audience that was brought in, you know, and, and they they may have heard and they may have watched a little as kids, but generally speaking, they're a new audience. So it was just it's just an interesting thing. So in this in this piece, he has a graph that says, here are the reasons why US viewers stopped watching professional wrestling. And it, the uh, the audience was audi- adults age 18 or older who used to watch at least one of AEW Dynamite, NXT Raw, or SmackDown. Well, well, people who watch AEW Dynamite are not lapsed fans, right? You know, and even NXT, I wouldn't say they're lapsed fans. Now, Raw and SmackDown, yes, you know, that's been they've been around long enough to where you can have an audience that watch them that, that doesn't watch now, and obviously there is a large audience that fits that bill. So, thirty percent of the people polled said. The reason they stopped watching was because it seemed more cartoonish than when I liked it. I thought that that was so weird because, if anything, the knock I would, I I wouldn't say the knock I would have, but the one thing it is, is that it is not really, I mean, I guess there's there's tongue-in-cheek, but cartoonish, cartoonish to me is like the 80s. The 80s was total cartoonish. An 80s WWF. I don't even think, not 80s Mid-Atlantic Wrestling or JCP or, or Mid-South Wrestling. Those, to me, were not really cartoonish. Memphis was, to a degree, to a degree. Uh, but WWF was, was the key, you know, of, of cartoon wrestling. And, and 
so that's why that is so weird when you, I mean, there's, there is this certain tongue in cheek aspect of things, but cartoonish is not the word I would use to describe it at all. The other high, high ranking ones were storylines were not as good well, or that's interesting. Probably, that's, that's probably true because, you know, when we're talking WWF, I mean, like they're not, they're not. And, and also they don't stick to them, which is, which is to me more frustrating than anything. You know, you invest in them and then they go nowhere and eventually you stop investing them. And then when you stop investing in them, you, you know, start, you know, like a soap opera, you know, it's like you stop investing in the soap opera. You may watch it out of habit for a little while. Eventually you stop watching it. I mean, that's what happened with me with soap operas. You know, I stopped investing in the storyline. The storyline got too stupid for me and moved on. You know, there's other things to go to do in life. Characters, not as good, interesting. I don't, I don't really like the way that that is framed because I think what's missing is the star quality of Absolutely. the wrestlers. And I don't really see that represented here. Uh, maybe characters are, are the closest, but I, I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't I think, like Stone Cold Steve Austin because I found him interesting. <laughs> it's because I found him sort of bigger than life. Well, I, I think that in the end of the day, when it comes to boxing, MMA, and professional wrestling, and and you know anything like that, and probably movies and music and everything, it's all about superstars. You know, that's what carries the genre in everything. When if if music could not make new superstars, and the only superstars were the old old superstars. You know, you would you would still have music, but the younger generation would not really be that into the music. Um, you know, the older generation would stick with the music, and and that's kind of the situation, maybe in wrestling, in the sense of um, I don't know um, that you know the there you know there's there's attempts to make stars but the you know and it's just not easy if you can snap your fingers and make a star i mean that's one of the things it's like oh you know like vince is great at star making and everything it's like oh yeah except for cena he hadn't really made one in a long time and you you have to have the guy i mean you have to have the guy you can't just go and and say this guy's a star you can absolutely sabotage and ruin a potential star and it happens all the time but it's very, very difficult to make a star, especially now. I think because of the fragmented nature of the entertainment world. Um, and how much is star making? How much of it is, there's this person, I think they're going to be great. Let's sort of build them into, into what we want. Or there's this person who is good, but then something happens and they get a break. And all of a sudden you push them because it's sort of like, Becky Lynch, um, you know, she was good, but then she caught a, a break Dan Daniel and people, Bryan. people got behind her, Daniel Bryan. But for the other side, it's like Roman Reigns, who they desperately tried to make the next John Cena. And I think like I personally really like Roman Reigns, but I would say that probably most people think that while good, maybe it was a little bit of a, a failure in the star making there. So, like, what, like, well, I, he, I, he is he is the biggest star, but he's not as big a star as the biggest stars of of previous eras. So, um, but you know what? If you look at historically, okay, of of all the guys that we look at, um, let's just go, you know, in the, the the real guys, okay, that that were really that guy. Okay, I mean, from from 1970 on, you know, when I look at like Dusty, um, you know, I think that they saw Eddie Graham saw something in him, but you know, when he turned, yeah, they thought he was going to be big, but not as big as he turned out to be. Um, you know, guys turned that were top heels into baby faces and stuff. Um, you know, Flair definitely had his backers. And his, but his rise was was more like you know he started as a you know middle card guy and moved up and just he just had so much charisma um, that was it just happened. Um, who who let's see H Hogan Hogan was with, with Vince. We all saw it. I mean everyone saw it. That was that was you know and Vern was the one. But so but the real happening. So so Hogan like we kind of knew you know even when he was. Sterling Golden and all that, you know, a guy who looked like that in that era, you know, people were into the looks and the bodies and everything that, that you know, you take a guy with that size, he was going to make it, you know, if he could do a decent promo. But what 
what, what you know, it was the audience that made him in the AWA, and Vern went with it, and then Vince took what was already made by the AWA with, and tweaked very little of it. Um, Austin was complete luck. They didn't see, you know, they didn't see it in him at all. It happened. Uh, Dwayne, they saw for sure, but it it flitted away and then it came back. Um, but he's one he's a one in a million guy, and um, I mean they 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 almost missed the ball on Cena. Um, so it's you know I I um, but it's hard you know. It it, 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 but it, but but it, it happens. You know, you have Mike Tyson, you have uh, Floyd Mayweather, you have Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey, Brock Lesnar. You know, I mean, these things, these people do come across at certain times. But you can't, you can, you you can't make them though. They 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 you luck into them. I mean, that's the reality. Is you luck into them. Is Rock really going to send a a video that Impact is going to show on TV? He said he was. <laughs> well, you know, Shamrock helped his career. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I think it's awesome. I just, I, I just didn't know. Uh, you I know, just, rem- I, I just remember. Promotion. I just remember. You know, when when I remember when Shamrock just started on the run with him, and Shamrock told me, and just goes, uh, Dave, this guy, the, the Rock, the, you know, Dwayne Johnson, he's going to be the next Bruno San Martino. And it's like, and I knew he was going to be over, but it was yeah. he was the. You know, and and you know the fact is is that uh, you know Cornette called me, or or I may have called him. No, he probably called me. Now that I think about it, like three days after his first Dwayne's first two matches, and said, "In five years, this guy's going to be the top star in this company and in the world." And he probably was by three years later. But mm-hmm. you know, so it's not like nobody saw it. It's like everybody saw it, and then it, you know, kind of didn't happen. But it, but then it did. All right, so people can check that out. Uh, the the v, the variety intelligence platform on Variety, uh, Gavin. What was what were the other? The, there were some other reasons too. The, um, the, the the last the last one that actually uh, was of of a big number. Twenty six percent said matches were not as good. Interesting. Well, that's because the stars aren't as big. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, and and I, I you know, people are not going to feel like. You know that larger than life match ha- happens unless you have two larger than life characters. I mean, no the, the, the matches are better now than when I was a kid. I just don't really care as much about well, that's, them. That's 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 the whole thing. Yeah, they're way better, but but you know you don't have. It's about the big personalities. Uh, you know, I mean, there's probably more great matches in UFC now than there ever were too. Yeah. But you know, unless it's the right people, it's like, and we talk about them every week, but no one even. You know, we see these incredible matches in UFC almost every week. And maybe for a day we talk about them, and then they don't even like last in your mind because there's so many of them. But you know, if it was like Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz, you know, which was a great, great match, both of them, you know, those last because they were two larger than life guys. Yeah, absolutely.